This is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right here. Right now. Here we go. All right, start the go-go's. Now, 1-800-288-WBAP. That's the contact line. 1-800-288. Did you hear that? Well, I'll get into that in just a second. We got some housekeeping to do first. Um, the baseball coach, we don't want Colorado athletes because of their state's drug laws. What do you think all the teammates... What what what, the hell, what is that? You think all the players are going to come out high? Come on, man, pitch me the ball. Come on, yeah. Whoa, look at that. What what's wrong with you? Okay, I, I'll get into that in just a second. Uh, we got some housekeeping um, to take care of. Hashtag God and prayer back in schools. Um, you know, a lot of people said, well, that's great, except you know, it'll be a one day thing, and you, then you'll forget about it. Now, but why am I sounding like that? Now I'm sounding like high pe- Well, you do do. Okay, look, I got to get off that Colorado drug law thing. Um, David, how you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing better now that you made me laugh. Okay, all right. And Lee at the controls. Uh, Lee, it's always a pleasure to see you. How you doing? Good, Rick. I just hear from your voice. You're not going to play baseball in this state, pal. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, actually, to tell you the truth, my son... Um, you know, I, t- I talked to Kevin Graham about it because he's he's from that area. Um, he's got a, a scout that's going to be looking at him at some point. That's uh, awesome. He's uh, he's throwing again, and um, you know, I hadn't he hadn't thrown in yes probably a year and a half, something wow. like that. And he's hitting uh, he's hitting ninety four, ninety five mile an hour, something like that. And uh, that curve is breaking pretty good, pretty quick. He's working the corners. He always has, sort of like a What's his name? I can't think of the kid's name. Uh, well, he's not a kid, but uh, he's he's doing pretty well. So we'll see what happens. Evidently, uh, he won't be playing at Texas Wesleyan. Uh, I don't really get that. I don't understand what's going on with that. Um, but anyway, let me uh, let me. I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, let me um, let me get a hold of David there. David, you got some announcements, right? Oh yes, sir, I do. Okay. Which one do you want me to lead off with? Me to, you know uh, what? Facebook it's, it's, Live. You got the mic, man. Okay. It's on you. <laughs> wow, this is a big honor right now. Okay, so what we're going to start starting oh, tomorrow? Z- I'm sorry, Zach Britton. That's who I was thinking about. Uh, you know who Zach Britton is? I want to say, doesn't he play for the Padres? No. Off the top of my no, head, no. no? It, Am uh, I? Go ahead and make your announcements. I'll get into this in a minute. I mean, I'm glad I get... you threw me on the bus with who, you know, who this guy is, yeah, but okay, uh, it's all right. We'll, why not? We'll move past that right now. So we'll give a total update on our God and Prayer first. So far, we have reached uh, 55,254 people have been reached, and that was from two days ago. So starting tomorrow, we're going to continue on this Facebook Live, and that is going to be during our first segment of every show. So at 2 o'clock, Rick will be on Facebook Live for the first segment, roughly from 2.03 to 2.12, 2.13, depends on how long he needs to go for. And then we will also be putting stuff on Twitter. How you can get to the Facebook Live, you just go to Facebook, and right in the top of the uh, search bar, type in WBAP. Right. Now, if you like us, as soon as we go live, it will send an alert to your phone, to your computer, to whatever tablet you have to be uh, you possibly be using. And all you have to do is just click on it, and you can watch us live during that segment. All right. That's cool. So you got a little thing in here. and So for the first segment of each show, Monday through Friday, we'll be on Facebook Live. Um, we're trying to build the numbers uh, for hashtag God and Prayer back in schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't a one-day thing. It wasn't a flippant comment. It was uh, something I, I truly believe in. And if you want to fix... You know, you want to. I hear all these politicians. Well, we'll get rid of those guns. Oh, we'll get rid of those guns. Um, something I've got to say about that Trump a little bit later, um, which I couldn't believe he said, um, flying in the face of the NRA and just about every other common sense individual on planet Earth. We'll get to that. Um, but uh, if we're trying to build the numbers because I've already talked to somebody that has a national audience. He's a friend, has been a long time, um, and we're going to take uh, those numbers to him. 
and let him uh, expose it to a national audience. Because, you know, I went to the website, change.org. They had 49, 49 people commented on uh, prayer in schools. They had thousands upon thousands of people um, talking about get rid of the NRA TV on uh, Amazon. So, as a matter of fact, you probably ought to give uh, Stenchfield a call because today's the day, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, so, I thought, well, you know what? I know that's not true. Either the website is being less than forthright or they're simply filtering people out. Now, you can filter me out, I suppose, if you want to, but I know, I know. I mean, I, I, you know what they say, you know, you know, you know. Uh, more people than that care about uh, putting God and prayer back in schools. Anytime you take God out of something, you create a vacuum. And the vacuum is generally, more often than not, filled with something you really don't want. And take a look at our schools. Uh, there's no respect. Profanity is the new language. There is no value for human life. And we're going to see more of this. And it gives me no pleasure in saying that. So uh, the short-term fix, as far as I'm concerned, you put uh, police officers in the school, you limit the ways in and out. Uh, that's a Band-Aid. And then you start the hard work of trying to place value on human life again. And I can't think of a better way to do that than God in prayer back in schools. So if, um, if you would, you go to Facebook, WBAP, scroll about halfway down. I don't know what my picture is doing up there when you first log in. That would make sense. But uh, scroll about halfway down. You'll see my picture again. You'll see hashtag God in prayer in schools. Um, click on that and share it if you would. Yes, please. And so far, it's been what, two days now, three days? How many days? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half days, 55,000 people. Uh, 55,254. Okay, very good. we got to remember good. those 254. They're the, very important. Hey, the 254 make a thousand at and, some point. And also, uh, every day, that I put out three posts on the Rick Roberts show. So. At 7 o'clock at night, 7 p.m., 11 yeah. p.m., and at 9 a.m. the following morning, there is a Rick Roberts post that comes on Facebook. So if you look for it now, because the way that Facebook works, it will not post at 7 o'clock on the dot. It right. may come at 7.05, 7.03, or 10 minutes after. So look for it. And those numbers get good numbers also. So every, every time we post, we're averaging two to 3,000 people reached every time. So we're trying to increase those numbers, and part of it's on me to – drive yeah. the content and, and when we get it up there a ways uh, then we'll uh expose it nationally all right not a problem uh, all right uh, good job david thank you um when we come back officials at uh, texas uh, texas wesleyan university have said the school does not discriminate students based on their home states after the baseball coach sent an email and by the way if the baseball coach is listening I've got more than a passing knowledge of baseball. My son's played since third grade, and um, he has played very, very well. Um, and he has graduated a few years back. I've never heard something like this coming from a coach. He sent an email to a potential recruit stating that the university no longer recruits student athletes from Colorado because of that state's drug laws. My question: what, What's wrong with this coach? Does he think that uh, does he think that the recruits are going to come stoned? I mean, is that not what you're laughing, Lee? Why are you laughing? You know, he may have a point. Look at John Elway right now. I mean, what he's doing with the Broncos? Well, yeah, but I mean, question. But come on, I mean, it. it, it okay. Well, we'll talk about it when we come back. Two twelve the time. Your afternoon drive. Let's check that right. <laughs> All right, uh, 17 minutes after the hour, 2.17 the time. It, this is amazing. It, this is called losing your ever-loving mind. Officials at uh, Texas Wesleyan University have said the school does not discriminate against students based on their home states. Well, that's good. That's nice. Um, the baseball coach sent an email to a potential recruit stating that the university no longer recruits student-athletes from Colorado because of the state's drug laws. Did you hear about this? I did. It's crazy. This is nuts. Here it is. Thank you for your interest in our program. This is Coach uh, Mike Jeffcoat. 
he wrote to the Cherokee Trail High School um, kid that was hopeful that he might get a look. Unfortunately, the coach says, we are not recruiting players from the state of Colorado. In the past, players have had trouble passing our drug test. I can't believe this is coming from a coach. We uh, have made a decision to not take a chance on student athletes from the state of Colorado. You can thank your liberal politicians. Best of luck wherever you decide to play. And I happen to have a uh, recording of this uh, young student athlete and his response. Uh, all I need are some tasty waves, cool buzz, and I'm fine. Yeah, well, um, this is the craziest thing I have ever heard in my life. Um, who is he? What does the kid have to do with liberal politicians or the state's drug laws? It, th- this makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, there's got to there's be... Hi, Gavin. Thanks for your interest in our program. Unfortunately, we don't recruit players from the state of Colorado. You guys can't pass our drug test. So we've made a decision to not take a chance on student-athletes. You know, as the dad of a student-athlete... Well, he's an adult now. I can tell you all those days, all those weekends... All the stuff that you go through as a parent uh, to get your kid in a position to be recruited. And then this coach, well, you're from from uh, Colorado. Uh, we don't like your drug laws, so we're not uh, recruiting from there. Really? <laughs> I'm sorry. This is tragically humorous. Uh, let's go to Jeff in San Diego. Jeff, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. Hi, Jeff. Hey, Rick, where you been, brother? I've been looking for you for years. <laughs> well, I've been here for the last couple. What's going on? Well, not much, not much. Uh, but I just wanted to call and tell you hi. I remember you back from uh, when you and CJ worked together. You'll remember me. I was giving you a hard time about marrying my seventh grade teacher. Oh, you're from San Diego. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There, and there hasn't been any talk radio in San Diego since you left, brother. <laughs> well, I think there's probably something. I don't know how good it is, oh. but there's something, I'm sure. Well, you got John and Ken up in Los Angeles, but that's about it. Uh, and I, I missed you, man. A whole bunch of us have really, really missed you, man. It's like we're losing a brother, man. Where are you living now? I'm, I'm in Golden Hill or uh, the South Park, but I live part-time up in Packwood, Washington. Well, listen, Jeff, it's good to it's good to hear from you and tell everybody I said hello and I'm right here two to five every day central time. Yeah, I've got you on my iPad here. I've been searching for you and I finally found you last night and I'm tuning in for the first time and if if them people don't know what a good guy they got on the radio, uh they should have spent some time here in San Diego because <laughs> I tell you what you were the best partner. You were the best. Jeff, I appreciate the kind words very, very much. And, hey, listen, welcome to the audience, and I'll look forward to the next call. All right. Thank you, sir. You have a good one now. All right, Jeff. Good to hear from you. Thank you very much. Greg in Weatherford. Greg, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Greg? I'm doing great. What's going on? Well, you mentioned my son's name. Who? Zach Britton. I'm Did sorry, say, I, we're, we got a delay or something. I mentioned your son, what? Did you mention Zach Britton's name? Yes, yes, yes. Well, that's my son. Uh, he's a pitcher for the Orioles, a lefty, lefty right? right? Right, but I thought, well, I've been listening, and I thought, well, maybe I missed. No, 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 we were talking about my son is a left-handed pitcher also, and oh, and right. and he studies – Zach's style you know how Zach well you know better than anybody he works the corners not over the plate and um I was talking to my son last night and he said yeah I really been stu- he's he's got a scout that's going to look at him I won't say from where just yet but uh he's been uh, studying uh, your son quite a bit well uh I hope that works for him I do too well I <laughs> had no idea you are you in Dallas no I live in uh, Weatherford that's where Zach went to high school, graduated there, and uh, 
2006, was drafted by the Orioles and been with him for all these years. Wow. Wow. Well, he's got a big fan in my son. Um, I mean, well, last... I'm a big fan of yours. I, I listen to you every afternoon. I, I never miss a... Well, I can't say never, but I rarely miss your show. Well, that, enjoy it. that's pretty cool. We ought to, I tell you what, one of these days, uh, we'll, we'll try to work out a phone call between, uh, uh, my son, I'll give you his name off the air mm-hmm. and your son, that, that, that would make <laughs> his day. I, I got on the, got on the highway last night and talked to him and all I heard was Zach Britton for about the next, uh, 20 minutes. He, uh, he's a big fan. Well, uh, we just appreciate that. That's, that's very nice of him. Yeah, sure. I'd hook him up, no problem. Zach's very, he's open to that that kind of stuff. He likes to help the young guys and the new guys whenever he can. He's really good about it, so well, that's, you should do that. I tell you what, David, I don't know what you, whatever you're doing, put it down. I'm going to put... Uh, I'm going to put Greg on hold, and let's get a contact number or give him my contact number. You can give him my number. And uh, we'll see if we can't uh, – oh, that would make my son's uh, year, uh, being able to talk to Zach Britton. Greg, I appreciate the call very, very much. Go ahead and grab that call, David, if you would. How about that? Isn't that cool? That's, you never know in talk radio. You never know. All right, 224 the time. We'll come back. We'll take your calls. I got a question. What should – the consequence be for this this coach i mean normally i give coaches the benefit of the doubt because good lord they got to work with all those parents and they got to deal with all that drama but in this case this doesn't even make sense your call straight ahead all right here we go 232 the time i'm rick roberts this is news talk 820 wbap that is uh very cool uh, Zach Britton's dad's listening, so um, I appreciate that, <clears throat> and we'll see if uh, we can hook the two sons up together via the phone call. That'd make, that'd make my son's day. All right, let's get to your calls. Mike in Joshua. Mike, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Mike? How you doing today, Rick? I'm good. Hey, I think Jeff from San Diego and Jennifer both spent some time in Colorado. <laughs> How's that? Well, I, I was, heard Jeff, and I went and put my Cheech and Chong shirt on. <laughs> uh, no, I, I called because, like I told you, Screener, uh, David, I think it was. Anyhow, what's the difference in this deal with the coach at TWU and California, state of California saying don't do business in Texas because they got a bathroom bill? Uh, you know what? There's enough craziness to go around there. That's for sure. I think I took this personally. Um, yeah, and they fired the coach at TW, uh, TW, uh, I took it personally because why, why should, you know, uh, a, a high school athlete, uh, why should, uh, you know, he bear the brunt of something he's got nothing to do with. Because yeah. some coach obviously has a problem with uh, Colorado's drug law. I do, too. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to talk to somebody from there. If, if he'd have left that last line off that email, he'd probably been all right. He, he, probably, he probably, you know, he sounds a bit political, you know, reading between the lines. Um, but um, you know, he, when he said, you can thank your liberal politicians, yeah. Um, implying you can thank your liberal politicians for me not giving you a look uh, because you're from Colorado. You don't say that. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Well, I guess you've been burned too many times maybe, huh? Well, uh, who knows? Maybe he's not been burned at all. Maybe yeah. he just doesn't like uh, the state's drug laws. I mean, a lot of us don't, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, that doesn't mean, I mean, you know, I lived in Evergreen, Colorado for about 12 years. Uh, prior to that, I lived in Denver proper for a couple of years. And, you know, it's no secret, Boulder, Colorado is known as the People's Republic of Boulder. Uh, yeah. It's a very liberal place, and it doesn't surprise me at all they passed this uh, this drug law. But that doesn't have anything to do with a student athlete. Well, it's political correctness getting us again is what it is. Yep. Amen, brother. I, I agree. Couldn't agree more. Um, all right, let's, uh, Mike, I appreciate the call. John and Sweetwater. John, thanks for waiting. How you doing, John? I'm well. How are you? I'm, I'm very well. Thank you. Good. I, I think you did take this personally, and I, I think you're missing the point. It's about scholarships. Okay, if, he, if the, the coach only has a certain number of scholarships, 
how many do you think he wants to waste? It sounds like he's been burned before. And if he offers a full ride to this guy, and then the man, uh, or the student, I should say, uh, can't pass a drug test, well, he can say, well, I only go home once a month, and yeah, sure, I, you know, I do marijuana up there. But okay, you, know. you, you have just rewritten a guy's entire email. Oh, I don't think so. Okay, well, let no. me read it to you. Okay. See if it says okay. anything even remotely close to what you're talking about. Yes. Uh, hi, Gavin. Thanks for the interest in our program. Unfortunately, we are not recruiting players from the state of Colorado. In the past, players have had trouble passing our drug test. We have, made a, we, we have made a decision to not take a chance on student athletes from your state. You can thank your liberal politicians. Best of luck wherever you decide to play. So basically, basically what he's saying is, I don't know you, I don't know your athletic ability, I don't know anything about you, uh, but because of your state's drug laws, and maybe they've recruited a, a, a couple people from Colorado. What does that get to do with this player? It, 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 uh, the past, in the past, he's been burned. He said that. In the past, students that, from Colorado can't pass our drug test. So we're going to, we're going to make a benchmark that uh, because a, a kid from Colorado didn't pass a drug test, that a eliminates kid? every single student athlete in the state. A kid? No. He, he said students, plural. Okay, well, do me a favor. Find out how many it is, and I'll change my position. If 100% of the people from Colorado um, are just out of their mind, if 100% of the student athletes that they have looked at from Colorado have not been able to pass the drug test, then then maybe, no, you know what? I wouldn't even change my mind then. Uh, I mean, what, what if you were sitting in Denver or Aurora or uh, any, any suburb or anywhere in the state, Grand Junction, wherever it is, and you had taken your kid to practice every day for years and years, sacrificed your weekends, uh, making sure they were where they needed to be, and some coach in Texas said, hey, you know what, now, we don't like your drug laws. You can thank your uh, liberal politicians for that. And we've been, uh, we've been burned by other student athletes, so you get to be painted with the same brush. <laughs> All I need are some tasty waves, cool buzz, and I'm fine. No, I'm sorry. Coaches, don't, I don't think, get to make that decision. I don't think you get to say to a kid, I don't care where he's from. Well, because of other people, you are now indicted. That's not, that's not, that, you know, yeah, you're right. It comes from a, from a, uh, from a student athlete's dad. I've seen the sacrifice. I know what I've had to do over the course of 12, 13 years. I've seen the struggles, and I'm sorry, just because the next-door neighbor is stoned out of his mind, you don't get to indict my kid right along with him. You don't. You may be passing up one of the best student-athletes you've ever seen. Okay, just my opinion. Yeah, I, I am taking it personal. You bet. Uh, Jack in Fort Worth. Jack, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Jack? Hello, Jack. Okay, Jack's not there. Let's go to Tony in Paris. Tony, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Tony? Hey, I'm doing great. And I just wanted to address to your uh, issue of the last couple of days about getting God back into school. Yes, sir. Um, I'm speaking, first of all, as a former pastor. I pastored for 17 years. Okay. Uh, also taught public school. I retired recently and taught in the public schools for 20-plus years and uh just as a side note, never had a problem making often, oftentimes making references to scripture or things about the Christian faith within my, my teaching. Um, but I'm going to play advocate here. Um, and just three quick questions that I, I would be, I would just like to hear you address. Number one, you know, I hear nothing but constant criticism of public education today. We don't think they have succeeded in educating our youth. We get all up in arms when they want to introduce sex education in public schools, and we say that's the parent's job. But now all of a sudden we want public education bringing God in the schools, quote, unquote. Uh, I'm not sure what that looks like. Uh, the second thing I wanted to address was if God had such a strong hold in our schools for so many years, how is one disgruntled 60-year-old atheist able to storm into the Supreme Court and toss God out. Uh, 
because we hear that phrase all the time about God being kicked out of the schools. And I just would like to hear you elaborate what that looks like to bring back God and prayer into the schools. Okay. Well, first of all, the country was founded on the principles of the Bible. Whether you like it, whether you don't, whether you want to argue with it, whether you don't, it was. The country was founded on the principles of the Bible. Um, And yes, we removed God. And it wasn't one 60-year-old atheist. It was a bunch of people with their nose out. It was liberalism. It was liberalism run amok. I won't say Democrats, because I know a lot of Democrats that aren't crazy. Uh, But it was liberalism run amok. You can't say Merry Christmas. You can't uh, talk about God when it comes to Easter. Uh, we We made our schools as secular as they could, as we could make them. So that was removing God and prayer from the school. So what happened when we removed God and prayer and the principles of the Bible? The principles of the Bible work for any denomination, all right? Uh, So what happened? That void was filled with a lot of unwanted changes. Violence rose to horrific uh, levels. Uh, Morals were out the door. Values um, were basically no longer valued. Drug use and drug sales increased tremendously. The use of profanity by kids and some faculty members became the accepted language, and all of a sudden, bullying became part of the landscape. And to make it worse, most of these kids now, after a few generations of going through the public school, which you're right, I don't like public education because I don't like the government, uh, you know, trying to uh, educate our kids. And when it comes to sex education, hell, we can't even teach them to read and write. We're, but we can, we're experts at teaching them how to put condoms on a banana. Um, most kids have little or no understanding of what it means to respect their elders or themselves or others. Prior to the removal of God and prayer from public schools, kids had learning environments that were valued and appreciated by both kids and parents alike. And the respect levels were entirely different than they are today. Today, our kids need us to be a voice for what's best for them, not necessarily what's politically correct. And as far as education, <clears throat> you know, I tell everyone, if my kids were uh, of, at the age where they would be in public school, I'd get them out. I'd take a night job, do whatever I had to do uh, to make sure they wouldn't be, uh, you know, socialized by the government. Outcome-based education, common core, it's all garbage. If you're an educator, you know it's garbage. All right, uh, 2.47 the time. <clears throat> you know, um, big student of the Founding Fathers, I, I think the thing that amazes me about the Founding Fathers, um, the things they wrote about, the things they said, uh, their quotes and so on, it's like they were living today. It's, you know, what they wrote hundreds of years ago makes as much sense today as it did back then. And Reagan you know, with all the school shootings, you know, well, the government's got to do this. Uh, the government's got to protect me. I mean, we've got a whole generation of children that think all they have to do is uh, cry out to D.C. and somehow they're going to be saved. Not realizing, because nobody will tell them the truth, this is a, this is a human behavior problem. This is not a government problem. Be very, very, very careful what you ask for. You're liable to get it. And if it comes from the government, you're stuck with it. Um, Like what Reagan said about a a totally unrelated topic could be just as true today about uh, school shootings and turning toward D.C. to save us all. In this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. Nothing, no truer statement's ever been made by any politician, let alone a president. Um, all right, let's go to uh, Mark in Arlington. Mark, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing just great, Rick. What's uh, going on? I have never disagreed with anything you said before. And initially, you know, when you were com- coming down on this coach, it was like, uh, well, you know, I understand where he's coming from. But you gave me a new perspective, so I had to change my viewpoint. And I want to thank you for that. The coach unloaded on the wrong guy. Uh, you know, I he would just love. He did. I, I don't know anything about this coach. Um, you know, my son's never played for the coach. Um, I'd love to chat with him. Uh, but yeah. as I read what he wrote, you're absolutely right. This kid had nothing to do with any of that. Not a bit. 
Not a bit. Now, as I understand it, it was Obama who decided that uh, he wasn't going to have the Justice Department go after these states in direct. Right. Don't they violate federal law? Well, all these marijuana laws. Well, federal law and state law are in conflict in the state of Colorado. You know, they're working and? that they're working that out at a political level. You know, who's got to, who takes precedent, the state or the federal government? Um, you know, once you cross the state line, it's pretty clear. But when it comes to to what this coach wrote, um, it was terribly unfair. Well, you know, if 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 it wasn't to a player, if it wasn't to a kid that had worked his whole uh, high school, junior high, and high school exactly. career, um, exactly, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I wouldn't either, and that's where I was coming from initially. And then I listened to you, and like I say, I've never taken exception to anything you've ever said before. And I was on the wrong side of this to begin with, but you converted me, and I want to thank you for that. Well, I, it, you know, I just looked at it pragmatically. Now, the coach has been fired. Um, I don't know that that was necessarily the right thing to do. You know, I think you perhaps could have gotten more out of this by saying, okay, look, this is what I meant, and then having him explain it and then say, you know, uh, maybe I was being a bit short-sighted, this may be a wonderful student athlete. Um, you know, I, I should not judge him by the action of others. I mean, don't we say that in every other walk of life? Don't judge one person by the acts of so many others. I mean, we're supposed to be judged on our own merit. And that's not what happened here. Now, was it worth firing the guy? I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there were, uh, there were other issues. I'd love to, if the coach is listening, or if you know the coach, please uh, tell him to give us a call. I would love to hear what he his reaction to this is. I'm not here to beat anybody up. I'm just saying, whoa, whoa. You know, maybe he had some bad experience with, uh, you know, kids from Colorado, but, you know, I've lived there. Not all of them are stoned walking around bumping into trees. Uh, Sherry in Denton. Sherry, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Sherry? Hi, uh, Rick. Thank you so much for taking my call. I'm sure. actually in the business. I am a owner of my own company where I help student athletes find the right fit for college. And I could honestly tell you I took a deep breath because I felt sorry for this coach. The amount of drug use that's going on in these student athletes is just out of control. There's kind of this entitlement thing about them now. There's only a certain amount of scholarship money that's available. Okay, Sherry, are, are, Sh Sherry, are you on speakerphone? Yes. No, so I'm talking uh, directly on my phone. Okay, because I'm having it. You're kind of going in and out. I don't want to lose you. Oh, I apologize. I wish I could figure out a place where I would get always a good signal. But uh, the challenge is, is that these coaches can only give a certain amount of scholarship away each year. And so when they do that and they carve out that piece of the pie and then they get a kid that comes in and fails the drug test. See, there's no drug testing for pre-entry. They only get tested, you know, randomly and by so some. So the team. coach has the the because I'm I'm I don't know the coach has the uh, uh, the authority to say okay because of the drug laws in Colorado I I don't want to to deal with any kid coming out of Colorado he has that authority. Uh, he probably could have without saying it because they all have stereotypes. We why, have why did he get fired then? Because he said it, and that's the problem. There's two sides of it. I, I, in some sense, I'm glad they say it when they don't hire a kid for their prejudice, but many times they don't say it. They just decline the kid who could have been talented because they get tired of losing kids in their program to drug tests. No, I, I get that, means. but that's you know that's life. Not everything goes smoothly yeah. for me either. Um, Sherry, listen, I'm up against the wall uh, on a hard break. I under, please give me a call back because I'd love to hear more about what you do. I appreciate it. Uh, 1 800 288 WBAP, 1 800 288 9227. If you're on hold, I promise you get your day in the court of public opinion. Um, but I got another question. Got another question. Is it possible, just possible, that this president, President Trump's honeymoon period with his conservative voters, has come to an end? What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about President Trump saying we should go ahead and take the guns and shelve the due process when it comes to people that we think shouldn't have guns. Wait a minute. 
take the guns first, go through due process second? Do you agree with that? This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, three oh four. The time. Doing okay. Doing all right. All right. Good. And uh, David, tell people. Uh, I just checked. The, uh, the prayer and God back in schools, um, I'm going to give you the numbers on that. Um, I'll tell you why, because I think, uh, <laughs> I think we're getting shorted. Um, there's a website called change.org. God and prayer back in schools, 49 recipients. They have a bunch of different things you can uh, react to. Removing the NRA TV from Amazon streaming service, 4,000. I, I don't buy it. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. Uh, David, how many uh, people have been contacted? Uh, hashtag God in Prayer back in schools. We've got up on the website on uh, Facebook, WBAP. Right now I'm looking at 55,425. Be nice to uh, hit 60,000 by the time we're off the air, wouldn't it? be nice to get 100,000. Uh, well, we do that, look, and we're taking it national immediately. I know, but, you know, I have high expectations. Well, um, all right. Uh, speaking of the NRA, uh, this was uh, kind of a red-letter day for them, right? Yeah. Yes, I just got off the phone with Grant. All right. Um, so are we going to talk to him shortly? I can. Yes, I can. I can get him out here shortly. But okay. But he was very short with me right now because he's in something right now. Right. Uh, today was the day, I think, that the liberals were coming against uh, NRA TV. And, and Amazon. Uh, and Amazon, exactly. So they encouraged their people to download the app, and they could watch it instead of going to Amazon and watching it from that right. way. Yeah, exactly. All right, let me get to your calls. Let's go to Kevin in Rockwall. Kevin, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Kevin? Doing great, Mr. Roberts. How are you today? Doing well. Okay, I would like to I just throw this out there. The, the coach... In response to this gentleman's application, says he can thank his liberal uh, uh, politicians. Politicians there in the state. You tell me the difference in his mentality and what the liberals are doing right now. So what he's going to do is punish everybody in the state for what a few people has done, and they're doing the exact same thing with guns right now. Yeah, I, you I don't. My point? Yeah, no, I do. I, you know, from you know, I always try to give coaches the benefit of the doubt because, my God, uh, I don't know how they deal with all the parents. I, I truly don't, and it's a nightmare sometimes. I'm sure. I just think he overstepped his bounds, um, and he lost his job because of it. I don't know if he should have been fired or not, uh, but to, to you know, tell a student athlete, we don't recruit from your state because of your drug laws. Thank your liberal politicians. I mean, that's a bit much. Well, he's doing the exact same thing that they do, and I understand where he's coming from because, like, I agree with you. I don't agree with their drug laws, and about anybody I know don't agree with their drug laws. But the simple fact is he's going to judge this young man that's worked his butt off his whole life on the actions of a few other people. You see, that's the same mentality, and that's what we're sick of. So, Mr. Roberts, you have a great day. Hey, I appreciate the call very, very much. Uh, let's go to Chris. Chris in Fort Worth. Chris, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Chris? Hey, Rick. I'm doing great. Thanks for uh, taking my call. You bet. Uh, really, I just want—I I think Kevin and I share the same viewpoint. Uh, you, you, we live in a constitutional republic, and it, we, the individual is protected from the, the masses by constitutional law. You can't—you cannot uh, judge the masses based on the actions of a few. Uh, you know, you hear the same the same argument coming from the right all the time. Well, we should ban these uh, these video games because they're the cause of of this violence that we see in schools. And you know, you can't you can't sacrifice the First Amendment rights of some so that I've got a better chance of keeping my Second Amendment rights. 
Yeah, it it uh, in in this coach's case, he may he may have had every foundation to stand on, but he went about it the wrong way. You know, it, it uh, you know he he should have probably gone to the university and said, "Look, you know this has been my experience. Um, how do you want to respond to uh, to letters and emails and calls we get from people in Colorado and let them deal with it? That's what they're supposed to get paid for." Oh, I agree. I mean, otherwise, it's a blatant case of discrimination based on nothing the kid has done. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's, it's a, uh, well, he just went about it the wrong way. I mean, and obviously, at the, you know, the very last line of his email, you can thank your liberal politicians. Thank them for what? For, for not, uh, you know, being, uh, being looked at by the state of Texas. Best of luck. Uh, I mean, sounds like the coach had a personal thing, too. Maybe he's hot about it. You know, who knows? I don't know. I haven't talked to the guy. But he got fired. I don't know if he should have got fired. I mean, that seems like sort of a giant leap. Um, but they probably did that so that they wouldn't end up getting sued in a discrimination lawsuit. Uh, Jack in uh, DFW. Jack, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Jack? Hello. I'm okay. How are you? I'm all right. Thanks. I don't, I don't buy the whole discrimination angle because the coach is under no obligation to offer a scholarship to, to anybody. Well, um, that he, kid, then that why did kid, he say that? Well, I, I don't know why he said it. I mean, that notwithstanding, I, you well, no, that you and, can't, you, excuse me, Jack. I don't, I don't want to be adversarial, but not, you can't say what he said is notwithstanding. I mean, it's uh, what he said could put the university in a discrimination lawsuit. I mean, just the the eight lines he wrote. Uh, it it's what he said is the very basis for why he got fired. But he has kids on the roster from Colorado, so, so by definition, he doesn't discriminate against it. And no, not that's, that's not by definition. By well, by definition, is what he wrote. He said he no longer recruits kids from Colorado. He does have experience with kids failing, from Colorado failing drug tests. Okay. But th- did this kid fail a drug test? No. No, you can't test them for entry, like Sherry was saying. Um, he, he probably, and I'm not, I don't know the guy, I don't speak for him, but he. Okay, let me let me I, do this. I, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to get like, back and forth. Hi, Gavin. I evidently, this kid's name's Gavin. Thanks for your interest in our program. Unfortunately, we are not recruiting players from the state of Colorado. Is that true? Is that a policy for for the university? No, it's not a policy for the university. But he he just said that. He has kids on the roster from Colorado. Okay, he just said we are not recruiting players from the state of Colorado. So is that a lie? Well, apparently it's not true. So it's a lie then. Well, if you want to say so. The no, and it's not. Him. It's not about me. I, I give the benefit of the doubt to every coach, uh, because I know what they have to go through. Unfortunately, comma, we are not recruiting players from the state of Colorado. Period. Is that true or is that false? That is false. Okay, that's what he wrote. Then he continued. Well, yeah, you know, look, Rick. It, it may be true. He may have decided in his own mind that I'm done with kids from Colorado. Now, he shouldn't have said it. He didn't have to say it because the kid contacted him. It wasn't the, it wasn't him going out and recruiting the kid. Correct. So, okay, what I'm saying is he shouldn't have said it. He, he, can, he can have it that way all he wants to. He just shouldn't but it, have said but it. But, see, that doesn't – okay, what you just said is probably the case. Probably the case, Jack. He took it too far – when he opened his mouth, because now you put now you've put the university in a discriminatory uh, discriminatory position. You didn't have to do that. You just didn't have to say we're not recruiting at this time. Period. Exactly. But the, it's not discrimination because the kid has no right to a scholarship. It is. He he, it is no, discrimination it's, based it's on the way the email is written. We are not well, he could, recruiting he players still, from the state. In the past, players right. have had trouble passing the drug test. Uh, so that impl- 
that implies that they believe this kid's going to have trouble. We have made a decision to not take a chance which on any kid, not on just student any at, kid. On student That's athletes from your state. You can it's thank your liberal. you can thank your liberal politicians. Okay, but it's not discrimination, Rick, because the kid could still enroll. I'm telling you what, I could spend 15 minutes with you in in a room, and you could go in and make the best discrimination case uh, that's ever been seen out of this. Well, it, it, then why can the NCAA dictate to North Carolina their political policies when they didn't want to change the bathroom bill? Well, the bathroom bill was a national uh, – that came down from Obama's no. administration in that a letter. Was, that, was, that was the NCAA putting pressure on a state, the local policy. By virtue of a letter from President Obama. I read the letter on the air. Well, I know it's kind of an apples and oranges deal. It is. But, but, You're comparing but apples to crescent wrenches here. It, it just well, – uh, what ha- this, this coach may be the best guy – uh, in the state of Texas, I don't know. I haven't talked to him. I'm saying this email was the dumbest thing for anybody in his position to do. Sure, it was. But and, he, he, and he lost it, either. and he lost his job because of it. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's better think, just not to say anything. Well, I mean, it. I don't know why he got fired. Like I say, I know he. I know he has experience with it, and him, but the kid. My point is. It can't be discrimination if the kid can – the university can't be discriminating against the kid if the kid is free to enroll at the university, pay tuition. Okay, and- and we're not talking about going in for academic purposes. We're looking at a student athlete that obviously made an inquiry to, uh, to be looked at, to have somebody give him a look, and the coach just screwed up. He wrote a highly discriminatory letter, basically because your state uh, legalized pot, and uh, I've had kids uh, that can't pass the drug test. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not recruit- recruiting you. I'm not looking at you. You can't do that. I couldn't do that to you as an employer if you wanted to work. Hey, listen. I know that part of town. I've had several employees. Uh, people. Uh, you know. I'm sorry. I just don't. I. I don't hire anybody from that part of Dallas. Uh, next, you can't do that. Uh, Three sixteen. The time. Let's take a look at your afternoon drive. All right, 3.21 the time. That last caller, did you say his son played for the team? That's what he told me. Okay, well, maybe that's obviously going to color and filter your, you know, your view of this. And I get that. You know, my son's played for teams, and, you know, I've defended the coach uh, when, you know, he did some stupid things. But um, I don't know why. As a matter of fact, Call TWU and tell them who you are and just say, why was the coach fired? Was it because of this or was it a culmination of things? It was two things. He had that and he also had something where they, with a recruiting violation. Okay. Let, me, let me look into it. Yeah, let me let's look find into out. It. Let's not hypothesize on the air. Uh, Zach in Addison. Zach, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Zach? I'm doing well, Rick. Thanks for having me. You bet. Yeah, so I just wanted to say real quick, um, being an ex-college athlete, um, I think the, the coach was being a little ridiculous because um, I know from my experiences, I've had teammates um, that get in, um, in, in trouble with failing drug tests and whatnot. Right. Um, and I, I'm not originally from Texas. I went to a, a school somewhere else, and we didn't have a single person on that team from, uh, from Colorado or California or Washington or something like that. So I think it's just a little ridiculous how he – you know, there's definitely discrimination being like you know unnecessarily. Oh, there's there's no question. There, it's clear discrimination uh, in the legal sense. Now, if that's what he was trying to do, I don't know. Probably not. Uh, he probably is. Uh, you know, he's under a lot of pressure as most coaches are, and he probably had had it and you know just kind of lashed out with the email. But you can't do that kind of thing. You got to think no. about what you put in black and white. You know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. And you're definitely held accountable by your words, and it stinks to see another coach make a, a poor judgment call. But I mean, yeah. All by all accounts, he's a pretty good coach, from what I hear. I don't know much about him. 
I, I've never met him, never talked to him. Um, people I've talked to said, yeah, he's a pretty good coach. Um, all I've got is his email here, and I'm thinking to myself, man, why did you put that down? Why, you, why, you know, why? Yeah, yeah, that definitely shows the school in a poor light, and, you know, it's going to hurt hurt them in future recruiting classes because they're going to know that from, from future athletes who are going to be interested in TWU. Well, I, I, I hate to see anybody lose their job, especially in this, uh, this economic climate. Um, I, I can't think it's just because of this. It's maybe something else too, but Zach, I appreciate the call very, very much. 324 the time, uh, I'll get back to your call. I've got to, I've got to get to this. Um, Trump, as a matter of fact, when I walked in, I just stepped off the elevator and was headed down the hall to the broadcast booth and somebody said, Hey, how about Trump? I, who knows? I hadn't even, I mean, what (laughs) pick something, uh, president Trump said yesterday that due process should be shelved in some cases in order to first confiscate guns from a mentally unfit individual like, uh, I'm sure like Cruz, the Florida shooter. Um, That's a pretty startling comment. You know, you don't throw due process around. uh, You just don't do that. Um, He was talking about school safety and gun violence, and it was a big powwow at the White House with a bipartisan group of lawmakers. I I think that's why all the Democrats are walking around on cloud nine now. Did you hear what the president said? He's ready to do away with due process and get the guns first. And I'm thinking to myself, well, the honeymoon period between uh, conservative voters and Trump may be coming to an end. We'll find out what you think next. All right, here we go. 3.32 the time. You guys ready? Ready to do this thing? All right. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. Let's go to uh, Jasmine. Jasmine in Dallas. Jasmine, thanks for your patience. How you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you, Rick? Good. I talked to you a few months ago, and I am so excited to be back on the air. Thank you so much for taking my call. You bet. Anytime. Um, so I really understand this coach's frustration because Colorado isn't the only state that's made me legal. There's California and a multitude of other states that are making it legal in one way, shape, or form, and that has to increase the drug usage in his athletes. But leaders need to be steadfast and strong in times of turmoil, and so what he needed to do was go to his boss and talk to them about drug testing before scholarships are offered, and that way he doesn't run into this problem as often where these kids are smoking weed or doing whatever drugs they are and they have to kick them off the team. So my cousin was from New Mexico and was kicked off the team, uh, off a team for baseball because of weed as well. So it's frustrating for the whole team when that happens. Not I sure. understand his frustration, but he needs to make sure to not discriminate. So a simple answer to that is, sure, we'll go out there, but we're going to make it now our policy before we even offer you a scholarship that we're going to drug test you. Yeah, it seems to me, Jasmine, and, you know, I'm not I'm – not supposing that I know more than the coach about his own business. But, you know, if he's having a problem with uh, a state that uh, has legalized pot or whatever, uh, simply go to the university and say, look, you know, we've got a limited number of scholarships. Um, Mm -hmm. This is what I've experienced. Um, You know, say, look, since uh, your state has legalized pot, we're not implying anything. We're uh, we're just, uh, you know, we're doing across the board drug testing for all, uh, you know, possible recruits. I don't see anything right. wrong with that. Exactly. And it doesn't even just have to be Colorado. We can make it everywhere because here in Dallas, I promise you, I know just as many people that smoke weed here in Dallas as they did in Colorado. Just as many. They're just doing it under the table and maybe it's not as good of a quality. Yeah. It, it, to me, when you get it, if you, if you're a, a student athlete, if you have spent your, your middle school, junior high, high school, uh, career, uh, doing, getting to a point where you're good enough, you play at a level in whatever sport, uh, that you might be able to get a ride at a, at a college, chances are you're not getting stoned, um, you know, at halftime. Maybe you are, I don't know. Uh, but you, those guys you, and women, you need to at least give them the benefit of the doubt. Exactly. And then from there, you can kind of make decisions and say, I'm sorry, you didn't pass a drug test and you haven't um, put the whole team at jeopardy or risk by kicking them off later on once the season started. Precisely. So, Precisely. It, it yeah. just sounds to me, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm reading between the lines for what that's worth. As I read this email, 
Uh, I see a frustrated coach that is probably uh, on his last nerve and, you know, uh, just uh, said this is the way it is yep. and move on. Well, he took matters into his own hands, which you can't do. You which, can't overstep your Which you can't do. Goals. Exactly. Yeah. Precisely. Uh, it's a good thing you didn't call in the beginning. I wouldn't have anything to say. <laughs> well, I hope you have a great day, Rick. All right, Jasmine. Take care. Uh, let's go to Monica in Mansfield. Monica, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Monica? I'm doing great. I am a mother of a baseball player, and you have made me laugh. You you have taken it personally, which I would too. Yeah. But, um, you know, my son has gone to college, played ball, and their star pitchers are getting kicked off the team for doing drugs. He went to that school because they were supposed to be great. And your your starters are getting kicked off because they're doing drugs. You know you're getting drug tested. Why are you doing it? Yeah, you see, that's (laughs) nobody ever said that student athletes, you know, were at the top of the academic ladder. Uh, (laughs) But, you know, some of them are. Some of them, you know, I played football in high school with Steve Largent. You know, this guy, uh, except for when he copied off my biology paper, was, was an extremely intelligent kid. And he ended up being a Hall of Famer. I mean, the guy's great. But, uh, you know, in this particular case, there are certain things you can say out loud and certain things you can't. And in this case, the coach stepped over the line. I, I totally agree with that. But this, this whole conversation has kind of just made me laugh. I just want to tell you, thank you. I've enjoyed your show today. <laughs> You're welcome, Monica. I hope your son does well. Tell, tell your son not to smoke a joint. Uh, in the seventh yeah. inning, all right? He He's graduated, and he is going for his master's to be a college coach. Oh, well, good for him. Good so, for, well, he probably yeah. he probably has something to say about this story then. Yeah, I can't wait to talk to him about it. All right, Monica, have a good okay. day. You too. All right, let's go to Joe. Joe in Fort Worth. Joe, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Joe? I'm great. How are you? Thanks I'm good. On. You bet. Um, I just want to see if you clarify for us exactly what form of discrimination this student would be experiencing. Because you know, I'm kind of trying to think through. It wouldn't be gender discrimination. It wouldn't be Title IX issue. No, nope. be racial. No, nope. wouldn't be it, racial discrimination. Right? The because... whole the whole thing is based okay. on uh, the coaches. I, I would assume experience. I don't know. Uh, I would assume it has to do with the state of Colorado and their drug laws. And since he resides in that state. Uh, he is automatically, by virtue of this email, being cut out of any but consideration. Geographic, geographic location is not a suspect classification. Doesn't matter. You can st- you can still file. He could still file. The the kid, his name's Gavin, I think, uh, could still file. I'm not uh, being given the same consideration in the state of Colorado that somebody from the state of Kansas is. Uh, now it would would they it? Don't, they don't would, have to be though. I mean, Wesleyan's a private institution. You know, so it doesn't have to worry about, like, equal protection issues. It's not I, state active. I'm, t- I'm telling you, I have seen this time and time and time again. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, if, if you're looking to defend the case, I would give Mike Jeffcoat a call. You might be able to, you know, conjure up a, a case on this. Uh, he got fired, uh, so maybe you could get his job back. I don't know if he got fired just for this email or not. But when you say, hi, Gavin. Thanks for the interest in our program. Unfortunately, we are not recruiting players from the state of Colorado. In the past, players have had trouble passing our drug test. Well, that may be true, but that's not Gavin. That's assuming that he's going to have the same problem passing the drug test. You can't do that. He, we have made a decision to not take a chance. Uh, the word chance being the operative word there, I, I think he probably should have said something else. Take a chance on student athletes from your state. So since your domicile is in the state of Colorado, which has a legalized drug policy, you won't be looked at. You can thank, he goes on to say, your liberal politicians. Best of luck wherever you decide to play. Um, Sort of a backhanded compliment, I guess, guess at the end. You can't, uh, by virtue of where someone lives, uh, you know, I could say, you know, I've had a really, really, really bad experience uh, from uh, employees at Oak Cliff. You know, uh, Lee, how many employees from Oak Cliff have we had to fire because I couldn't pass the drug test or they were, you know, whatever? I can't do that. 
I, I can't discriminate against you as an applicant based on where you live. I can't do that. And neither can this coach. All right. Uh, I appreciate the call. And it sounds like you're going to do very well uh, once you get it in private practice. Uh, Stormy in Dallas. Stormy, thanks for waiting. How you doing? I'm good. How are you, sir? I can barely hear you, Stormy. What about now? There we go. Perfect. I am calling in regards to President Trump's statement about taking due process away uh, first before court. Right. And I think it's being taken out of context. Be to listen, he was addressing the law enforcement perspective and only addressing where an APAL occurs, which is where they take someone for a mental health issue, danger to themselves or others, where they're held for 72 hours. And attaching that ability to confiscate any weapons um, until they go to their hearing and determine that they are no longer a threat to themselves or the public. That's exactly Not what it, that's exactly door that's a, to door Stormy, and, Stormy, hang on. That's mm-hmm. exactly what he said. In response to law enforcement, you would have to yeah, have in, re, in response situation to law, at first. Okay, Stormy, I'm not arguing that point. What I'm saying is mm-hmm. he feels that if you're taken uh, uh, for evaluation, if uh, somehow, some way, you're being evaluated uh, as to your mental state, whatever it is, take the guns, then, mm-hmm. and the due process can come later as to whether you get a, get them back or not. Now, from a law enforcement standpoint, I got no problem with that. I got relatives. My son-in-law is in law enforcement. I don't want him dealing with some half-crazy idiot out there with uh, with a mm-hmm. firearm. Uh, but the due process, that was probably not the thing to say. So you just didn't like the wording? What's that? You just didn't like the order of the wording? No, that I think it could, have, it could have been said where it was more palatable um for for everybody i mean the democrats think they got some kind of win then uh because okay he's ready to take the guns and we'll figure out the due process later well due process is simply put as fair treatment through the normal judicial system especially as a citizen entitlement you don't just throw that away uh, even if somebody's in, in institutionalized or being evaluated for 72 hours well i'd probably have to disagree with you on that but that's okay and, and i am not a democrat at all no no no, no. I, look, I, nor am i i'm just saying you know to, instead of saying well you know we'll worry about the due process later <laughs> wait a minute you may want to grab the constitution before you say that instead he could have said hey look uh, times have changed. If somebody is picked up uh, for mental evaluation, um, you know, the right thing to do is confiscate whatever thing, whatever they have that would, including sharp objects uh, that they might do themselves in with, or, uh, you know, just like when they put somebody on suicide watch in a jail. I mean, there are any number of ways you could have gone about this without saying due process will come later down the line. I agree with that. So it's just I wanted clarification. It was just the wording and and the reference there. Well, All right, I agree with you. I appreciate it. All right. Well, Stormy, I appreciate the call. I look forward to the next one. You know, the conduct of legal proceedings strictly according to established principles and procedures, you know, that it was laid down to make sure everybody got a fair trial for everything they were accused of because the infallibility of the court, judgments, can't be guaranteed the legal system aims to do what well secure the second best possible option the guarantee of due process that's the best we can do i mean nobody's perfect Uh, it means no accused is punished without an orderly and adequate procedure that's uh, uniform in all cases under a due process every accused gets an advance notice of trial an opportunity to be there, to be represented, to be heard, to defend him or herself. Uh, It also includes the rights to legal counsel. I don't need to go through this. You know that. Uh, You know, so, you know, just flippantly saying, well, we'll get to due process at some point. No, no. (laughs) If, If you want to take someone's guns, you don't do it by ignoring due process in the order of the timeline. You simply, you know, come up with, hey, if you're being evaluated, uh, for mental stability, and you've got firearms, perhaps we should make a 
confiscation of firearms until you've uh, until you've been deemed mentally stable. Don't throw out the due process. All right, at 3.51 the time, this is Rob from Dallas. Rob, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Rob? Good. How are you today, sir? Good. Hey, I've been a police officer for 34 years, and what I'm hoping is that President Trump, when he was referring to taking away guns without due process, is uh, by his lack of experience in the criminal justice system as a politician, it's something similar to what we have in the Texas laws. It's called a magistrate's order for emergency protection. Yeah, that makes sense. It is sense. an order after uh, family violence or stalking incidents where a victim or a police officer appeals to a judge, and the judge, based off of just what's being told to them right then, the, the defendant doesn't get an opportunity to speak, doesn't even have to be there, will make a decision saying, okay, these are the following restrictions that are in place for the next 90 days just as a precaution. Some of the restrictions include your concealed handgun or license to carry is taken away from you for 90 days, as well as the possession or transportation of a firearm is a felony. And like I said, it's an ex parte order, meaning that the defendant or the person being served with a protection order is not there to put their side of the story out. It's just based off of the probable cause presented to the judge at the time. So I would hope that what he's talking about is putting a mental health type situation in there, similar to the the family violence or stalking. Well, it's, it sounds like uh, you're very familiar with law enforcement, and I have heard of the emergency order um, through my family. I'm not personally familiar with it, but my fam- most of my family's in the law enforcement. So I have heard of that. And I'm, I'm hoping that's what he's talking about. Now, you know, I struggled to try and make that clear a moment ago. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to speak for the president, uh, but probably not the best choice of words by saying, we'll take care of due process later. Um, no, I, I agree. I think, I think the choice of words was poor. But the due process, that everyone thinks that they have the right to stand up in front of a judge, and that's true, but in some circumstances, what they have to do is put a stopgap order in place until everybody can be gathered and make their presentation to the judge. Right. I'm hoping that's what it is. I've, I've been doing law enforcement for 34 years, and it's just one of the things. We do come across those that are mentally ill, and while we do have the, the right to do it in APAL, which is arrest by police officer without a warrant, to send them to a mental institution, we need the ability also in some cases to say, look, the the judge or the police officer deemed you such a danger to yourself or society that we put you into a mental institution for evaluation. We don't need you having a weapon during that time also. Right, right. And, you know, know, it makes perfect sense. Um, But as President Trump is prone to do, sometimes, you know, his words get ahead of perhaps what he's thinking and, you know, if he had just left due process out of the entire equation, so to speak, I don't think, uh, you know, Democrats wouldn't be beating the drums of victory. I don't know what they were victorious in. Um, and Trump wouldn't be trying to once again re-explain what he said. Correct. And I think that's just from political inexperience. And that's one of the things that he brings into the presidency. He's never been a politician. Yeah. So, and, and, and the, you know what? That's not all bad, (laughs) but uh, from time to time, you're going to have a situation like this. That's why I said, is the honeymoon over between Trump and his conservative voters? Um, You know, I hope that they will look past what he said to perhaps what he meant. Correct, and I agree with you on that. Rob, thank you for the service uh, in what you do. I appreciate it. 3.55 the time. Um, Yeah, it... uh, it wasn't the best choice of words. And, you know, it's something that we probably need to expect from a non-politician politician. Uh, the Democrats are running around. Chucky Schumer, I, I think his, uh, I don't think his feet have touched the ground all day. But, uh, you know, he di- I, I'm, I'm sure he didn't mean, let's get rid of due process until we need it. No, you have a right to due process. 3.55 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. You're next. 
is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WVAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, 404, if uh, you're new to the show, Something you need to know about me, something that drives me absolutely insane is not knowing something. You know, my field of law is not uh, discrimination law. Uh, It's contract law. Uh, But, you know, I'm looking at this email, and a couple of calls put me in mind. So I did a little vetting. Um, It turns out, uh, is geographical discrimination legal. And I I suppose this would fall into that. We're not going to recruit anybody from Colorado because you've got drug laws that legalize pot. And for all I know, you're a stoner, a wake and baker, who knows? Um, Is geographical discrimination legal? Yes. According to what I've been able to uh, uh, vet here from the writings of an employment law attorney um, out of Fort Lauderdale, it is legal, primarily for people that don't want to move close to the job and that kind of thing. Um, So then you go from that to uh, is political affiliation, because that's what he mentioned, the political uh, politicians um, making pot legal in California or in Colorado. Um, You know, can you fire someone for political views? Well, federal law bars employers for firing people because of race, religion, gender. I mean, we all know that. But there's no such protection for political affiliation. Did you know that? Um, so now I'm looking at this differently. Legally, I'm looking at it differently. Um, individually, I think it was a stupid thing to do without contacting the university and deciding what the exposure might be for the university. But, uh, again, David, did you find out why the guy got fired? Was it just this email? Was that it? It was a NAIA violation, which is well, that's just not a what this general is. violation of athletics okay. within the net. Have they, have they ever heard of Barry Switzer? No, I'm, I'm kidding. It's a joke. It's You had to be there. Um, all right, let me get to your calls. Let's go to uh, Katina in Arlington. Katina, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Katina? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, I'm a little more nervous today than usual, so um, hopefully I don't mess up. Okay. Um, I just I have a perspective that I haven't heard from any of the callers yet. Um, now I did do admit to have heard it earlier in the day on another talk show, but. Um, with the Democrats being super elated and excited about what Trump said, right. um, I find it kind of suspicious. It reminds me of one of the past scenarios where he invited the media in to talk about immigration reform, right. or I think that's what it was. And even before I heard anything on the radio, I was like, something's not right. That was like a red flag because they were so excited. Um, and, you know, to my relief later i did hear on the radio that other people were suspicious too that he was holding some cards making him show making the democrats show theirs and that he really had something up his sleeve and i was like Whew, i'm starting you know to have these ideas on my own and not just hear them from others sure but that's how i feel in this situation i mean i hope but i'd be willing to bet some money that he's got something up his sleeve he never says the right thing i do agree with that but it just seems kind of, it seems oddly familiar. And I hope that's what's happening because he's angered conservatives before, but very rarely does it end up what it seems. Um, and I'm very conservative. So, but I still have hope. No, I, I do too, Katina. And no reason for you to be nervous. You did a great job, by the way. Um, you know, as I look at this and what he said, uh, it was, to me, it was almost. Uh, I'll be honest with you, my heart rate didn't go up at all. I just thought, oh, man, uh, you know, you, you said something without perhaps thinking it through. And you can say a lot of things, but when it comes to due process, you're talking at the, about the heart of the Constitution. 
Um, and people are going to pick up on that. I, I think the Democrats, I think you're right. I think they are falsely jumping around like it's Christmas morning, um, when in fact, you know, I don't think that's what he meant. Uh, I, and I hope, I, I'm hoping against hope uh, that it'll get cleared up right now. The NRA was not too pleased with what he said. Uh, they're pushing back against uh, raising the age requirements for gun purchases and some other things. But I don't think anyone but the Democrats took this, you know, getting rid of the due process um, Rick, the way he said it. Um, just be- before you hang up, I wanted to tell you something. I okay. just thought of it. Um, I reposted what you did on Facebook. Oh, thank you. And I've only I've only gotten two likes, one from my husband and one from another person. And so I think something's holding it up, just like you think. Because usually I have more people that like my post than two people, yeah, one of them being David, my husband. David, so did, something seems fishy. Did you hear that? Hold on a second. Say that again, Katina. I reposted what you had, I think, two days ago. Right. And I've only had two likes, and one of them is my husband. And I, I always get more likes than that. So, and I know there's more people out there that would have at least liked it, if not commented on so it. So you're thinking it's being filtered or something? I think it's being filtered. I mean, it's oddly suspicious. And that same night, I joined the NRA, uh, and only one person has liked it as well. Wow. And so it just seems oddly, like, I feel oddly censored right now. Like, it's not appearing in people's news feeds. It's you, really weird. What do you think of that, David? I mean, you're more wired than I am. Well, the numbers don't show what she's talking about, so I'm kind of questioning that. I'll look that up. Yeah, I'll look, her an look that up. On. Katina, we'll look it up and uh, see what the possibilities are, because I think there's about, what, 55,000 people that have been uh, contacted, isn't that right? Something 55, like that? 55,648. Okay. I reshared it. I reshared it today, but based on the laws of exponential growth, I think it should have grown more. I, I agree. Based on how many times I typically have my post like. Well, Katina, keep and, an eye on that and let me know, will you? Of course. Okay, thank you. Because we're going to look into it too. Um, yeah, uh, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that hate God, hate prayer in schools, hate the NRA. Um, and you know, of course we've had, uh, instances where things were, you know, I don't uh, pretend to understand how all that works, but, uh, sometimes they get filtered. All right. Uh, speaking of the NRA, let's talk to the NRA next. All right. Uh, 16 minutes after the hour, 416, the time Grant Stinchfield, if that name is familiar, uh, he, uh, was with us at one time, uh, our sister station, KLIF, he's with, uh, NRA TV. And today was, uh, was a day that, uh, everyone was talking about. I'll tell you why in just a second. Uh, President Trump said yesterday, he asserted that due process should be put on the shelf in some cases in order to first confiscate guns from the mentally unfit individuals like the confessed shooter uh, down in Florida who killed 17 people. Uh, Trump made that comment during a a school safety and gun violence powwow at the White House, and they had Democrats and Republicans both there. Um, It was actually Vice President Pence who was talking about due process when it comes to potentially dangerous individuals when Trump jumped in, and he said, I like taking guns early like in this crazy man's case that just took place in Florida, go to court would have taken a long time, take the guns first, go through due process second. Well, the Democrats are going nuts. Oh, we won, we won. Um, Like the law enforcement officer that called earlier, what he was probably meaning to say was an emergency protection order uh, where if, if you've got somebody that's being evaluated, you want to make sure they don't have anything that could harm them or someone else. Unfortunately, it didn't come out that way. Uh, Grant uh, Stinchfield is with me. Grant, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, Rick. It's great to be on with you again. All right. Tell us uh, why today is important f- uh, for NRA TV. Um, well, what we're asking people to do is download the NRA TV app from Amazon and Apple. There's a lot of boycotts going on on, on uh, all these liberals and, and gun haters want to boycott Amazon TV and, and the Amazon platform because they provide us 
a platform to air NRA TV on it. So they're saying, hey, boycott your Amazon Prime membership. So we're saying instead of boycotting Amazon, why don't you download the NRA TV app and send them a strong message that, uh, that you know, you support the Second Amendment, you support the NRA, and, and you support good programming. Well, that way you uh, you avoid the boycott with Amazon altogether, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't think people are going to look. Amazon does a great job with Amazon Prime. I've got Amazon Prime, and it and it's, it's a great service. I mean, you can't beat it. People aren't going to boycott Amazon because uh, there's some kind of liberal out there that says we should hate the NRA and boycott Amazon. I just boycotts don't typically work in general, but we figured, hey, it's a good move to get the word out there about NRA TV and, and word is spreading. And um, Rick, I don't know if you mind, I, I'd like to comment on the due process because the NRA has been thrown around oh, absolutely, with, with, Trump's, yeah. with Trump's comments. And I, I'm with you, Rick, due process is at the heart of the constitution. It is the fundamental tenet of what this constitution and what our government was founded on. And so uh, I want to make it very clear and clear to everyone out there that the NRA believes in due process. And just because we've got a pro-gun president in Donald Trump doesn't mean we can't disagree with him at times. Right. And on this, we staunchly disagree, and we will always be fighting for due process because the fundamental right that you are innocent until proven guilty is what makes America great. No, I, I agree. You know, look, I think uh, the NRA, from what I've learned today, they're not uh, real big on this uh, raising the gun purchase age to 21. Um, oh, I mean, let's be honest. The NRA wasn't too impressed with Trump's stance on the due process comment or just about anything else that came out of that meeting. But that doesn't mean, okay, we disagree, therefore we're not talking. That's what liberals do. Um, it's exactly. In this case, it's like, well, look, we've got a different, uh, different viewpoint, and here's why. Uh, that's how you come to a meeting of the minds. That's that's how you learn from each other. You know, my colleague over at the NRA's Institute for Legislative Action, Jen Baker, had said, yeah, it made for great TV, but it's not good policy. And I think sometimes what people love about President Trump and what I love about President Trump is he just speaks his mind and, and he literally speaks in train of thought process. And I think he just doesn't look at the consequences of what he said first, and, and oftentimes, and this is what I really love about this president, when someone explains to him why he's wrong, he will often walk it back and say, hey, you know what, I, I got it wrong in this case. I think you may see him do that when it comes to due process. We may have a little bigger battle on our hands when it comes to raising the age of, of gun ownership, but we disagree with him on that, and, and look, I just believe you're going to go off the fight for this country. And you're going to strap uh, an M4 on your, on your shoulder, an M14 on your shoulder, and, and put your life on the line for us. When you come back, you ought to be able to have a right to buy a firearm. Yeah. yeah I, I, again, uh, you know, we are dealing with a, a non-politician politician. Um, much, I think, of what Trump says is a continuous stream of consciousness. Um, that's why he, he is prone to walking things back. But at the end of the day, do I want somebody that's at least honest? even though he has to go back and clarify a few things? Or do I want a professional politician that's been up all night practicing with three-by-five cards to say the right thing in front of a TV camera? Well, I'm with you. And, you know, uh, he talked about, boy, we should have gotten the guns out of the hands of this deranged lunatic that shot up at Parkland High School. Look, we had plenty of ways to get the guns out of his hands. The Baker Act could have, could have acted on any one of these 45 tips to take guns out of this guy's hand and even arrest him. I mean, he had his parents that said that he put a gun to someone's head and threatened them. That alone is an arrestable offense. And so there were plenty of opportunities missed to go and get guns from this guy without having to throw due process into the wind. Right. right. And, well, I, uh, you know, we will see it, you know, play itself out, I'm sure. But uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, we're very fortunate to have uh, Trump in there. He's pro-gun for the most part. That doesn't mean he's pro-everything. I mean, obviously, if we all agreed on everything, there'd be something wrong. But, um, you know, I, I'm looking at what the NRA says. I'm looking at what Trump says. Um, the last thing I want is, uh, you know, after the midterms, to have a bunch of Democrats that have one goal in mind, and that's to disarm America. It is. You know, it's so, it was really funny, Rick, because when he said this, I had a whole bunch of liberals, you know, tweeting at me, oh, how are you going to spin this now, Stinchfield, your NRA guy? 
And, and I said, I'm not spinning anything. I disagree with them. But unlike the liberals, as you said, Rick, who blindly follow whatever their leader du jour is, conservatives can actually have conversations and disagreements and still be on the same team and have discussions about it. Liberals don't get that. And so, uh, look, I still support this president. I believe he is a firm believer in the Second Amendment and a firm believer in, in freedom. And uh, we're just going to have to make sure that the members of the NRA and your listeners and everybody else out there makes the case and lets their voice be heard that due process uh, means everything to us. And the Second Amendment is right there, is right there with it. All right, uh, Grant, one more time. What do people need to do so we don't have to deal with this uh, boycott and Amazon and all the rest? Well, you are too kind for let me say it, but I would just love if everybody could go out there and download the NRA TV app. You can find it on uh, the Google uh, Play platform, Amazon platform, Roku, of course, Apple TV. You just go to the app store and you download NRA TV and send all of these technology companies a message that, uh, that the NRA is loved. The programming's great. Trust me, I got a show on there every morning, the top of every hour, and and uh, send them a message. And, and that stuff really does work. There is strength in numbers, Rick. As you know, you have sent people calls to action, and I've seen stuff change because of your calls to action. Man, I'm telling you, it, 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 it works. Grant Stinchfield, NRA TV. Uh, go to Google, go to the app, uh, download it there. And that way we can you know, bypass all the boycott nonsense, all the Amazon stuff. Just just download the app and you got it there. Grant, thank you for being with me. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks, pal. We'll talk to you soon, Rick, and, and uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks again. 425 the time. We'll do a little business. Uh, Eric Bushman standing by in the WBAP newsroom, the very latest breaking news. We'll bring you the latest numbers of uh, the hashtag God and Prayer back in schools on uh on Facebook, WBAP, and a whole lot more. Your calls, too, next. All right, I'm back with you. That wasn't long, was it? 4.33 the time. You know, the more I, the more I delve into this, uh, this Texas Wesleyan uh, baseball coach, um, you know, I, I'm getting some info from the university itself. It says... Uh, well, first of all, about this baseball coach, um, it's Jeff, or excuse me, Mike Jeffcoat, um, spent 10, uh, 10 seasons in the majors, including, I think, six or seven with uh, the Texas Rangers. He retired in 94. He was hired at uh, TWU in 2002 and is the program's all-time leader in wins, 529 to 358 and one. Uh, he has led the program to the NAIA National Championship opening round tournament eight times. <laughs> it's not bad. Um, he hasn't responded to any uh, comments. Um, here, This is what I got from the university. We are aware of the email sent out by our baseball coach, and the comments he made are in no way a reflection of Texas Wesleyan University its values, or its recruiting practices. This is a personnel matter and is currently under investigation. But we want to reiterate that this email does not reflect our values. We do not condone discrimination. This includes discrimination on the basis of race, color, origin, ethnicity, gender, age, religion, disability, sexuality, or the political legislation of one's home state. I've been, um, it's simply the way I'm wired. I've been doing some vetting. Um, I don't think, I don't think uh, there's any protection for political legislation of one's home state. Uh, that may come into a personnel matter later. I, I don't know. Um, I'd just like to know why the guy was fired. If it was just because of this email, seems like maybe it was a knee-jerk reaction, like maybe you could sit down and coach. Let's take it easy, you know. This is probably a little too much. Uh, And he'd probably agree. And who knows? Maybe send the kid an invitation to come down. And uh, I don't know. So, David, would you work on that? I sure will. Uh, I mean, I can't believe that the guy would get fired over this one email. I think it was a stupid email to send by anybody associated with the university. Right. It was the email and a violation, which they're not going to talk about at this time because 
it's still being under review. Well, okay. But, but every school has a violation. Every school, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting some violation in every single university. National champs have violations all yeah. the time. I mean, I, I think it was, it was just absolutely, forgive me, but a stupid email to send by anyone even associated with the university. But I don't know whether the guy ought to lose his job over it. I mean, if if there's something else that I'm not aware of, you know, I'm, I'm staying corrected. But it uh, all right. Uh, let's tell people um, uh, how they can make their voice heard. Uh, this all started because, you know, I went to several websites about God and prayer. They keep talking, how do we stop the school shootings? How do we stop the school shootings? Well, initially, immediately, you put police, and that means you got to, you know, come up with some money to hire police. Uh, police officers' families shouldn't be living on food stamps, and we shouldn't be almost a thousand officers short in Dallas. Uh, but that's a whole nother topic. You need to put police officers in schools, uh, limit the ingress and egress. That's not difficult um, because you got doors, um, and you know, cough up a, a few bucks and make them like theater doors. You can get out, but you know, they're limited on who can get in. Um, that's an immediate fix. All right. Uh, you know, like a 13-year-old that called here yesterday, Mr. Roberts, if you put a loaded firearm on a table and no human being picks it up, it's never going to hurt anyone. He's right. You know, so, you know, stop with all the gun control rhetoric. That's, that just tells me you're not serious about keeping schools safe. We need to harden the targets, put police officers in schools. I think it, that's good on several different level, uh, levels. And a long-term fix, you have to put value to human life again. Now, it took us several generations to devalue human life, so it's not going to be uh, as simple as waving a magic, magic wand. Putting God in prayer back in schools makes perfect sense. I don't care what denomination you are or biblical principles, whether you like it or not, is what the country was founded on. And the reason that Christians keep getting the short end of the stick is because they tolerate everything. Well, okay, but at some point you draw a line in the sand and say, okay, no more. I'm not going to tolerate myself into oblivion. So you draw a line in the sand, say we're going to have certain principles. We're going to have, um, we're not going to have profanity in the hallways. We're, we're not going to do this kind of stuff. Well, Rick, that was back in the olden days. No, it wasn't that long ago. You know, we can get it back. But if we don't get it back, this place won't be fit to live in. So I went on some websites, and it was like, uh, God, God in prayer. This It was like 49 responses, and another place it was like 60. But when it came to gun control, it was like thousands, which shows me just how uninformed people are. So we put up on uh, the Facebook. I don't have a personal Facebook, but it's the company Facebook, WBAP. Uh, you go to Facebook, WBAP, uh, scroll down, I don't know, about halfway. You see my picture, and underneath my picture it says, hashtag God in prayer back in schools. Um, and we ask people to go there and like it and share it. And um, I'm going to get, uh, once the numbers get up, I have lots of national contacts in the media, and I've already spoken to one guy. And I said, this is what we're doing. He said, man, good luck with that. Um, I said, will you expose it nationally if, in fact, we get the numbers up? You know, you can't tell me only 49 people care about God and prayers in school. Um, I mean, I've even had people saying, look, I'm not a Christian, really don't have any theology of any kind, but biblical principles work for everybody. Yeah, they do. So we've asked people to go there um, and tell them how to do that, David. Okay, I'll recap how you go there. You go to Facebook. In the search bar, you'll put WBAP. And as Rick said, you'll scroll halfway down the page. That's where our post was for the hashtag God and prayer back in school. You go there and you use the share button. Click the share button, and that will inform all your friends, your family, whoever's right. part of your, your Facebook feed. And it's... And that will help help us build our numbers of getting up to the number that we need, and and that's uh, that's what we're asking people to do. So that's if uh, you want to reach out in a tangible way, then uh, you know please go there. All right, uh, let's go to uh, Perry in Frisco. 
Perry, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Perry? Uh, just fine. It's a pretty day now for a change. Yeah, I can take a nice day for a change. What's going on? Yeah, well, I got a question. Just talking about some of this discrimination issues. Thought about it last night. Uh, I know Dick's Sporting Goods, and I hear now Walmart's claiming they're not going to sell ammunition or guns to anyone under 21 years of age. And if you're got no legal restrictions, why you can't buy a gun or ammunition? Just other than the fact that you're 19, 20, whatever. Would that not be discrimination? They choose not to sell to you because of great. No, you know it's an individual business, and and you know it, it's they can they can set their own business policies. Like Dick, uh, Dick's. You know the thing about Dick's Sporting Goods. I don't think they sold. Uh, I don't think they sold that many rifles to begin with, and they quit a couple years ago. But I'm sure somebody in their marketing department said, "Hey, hey, hey, let's not a." not let a good shooting go to waste let's uh, be sure and jump out there and tell people we're not doing it i i, I mean it's a it's an individual business and you know the the age for purchasing guns i don't think is a protected class so you know they can they can set anything they want to on it as far as that goes i you know what i'm looking at perry is what's going to happen at the federal level um you know what are they are they going to change the law i don't know i mean Already, you know, certain type of firearms are prohibited until you're 21. So, um, you know, that, that looks like what they're saying. It looks like what Trump is thinking. But, you know, who knows how that's going to yeah. shake out. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that either. But I guess time, I'm going to have to give that a little time to see, I guess. But anyway, that was my thought. I just thought, because, you know, you get discrimination for lots of things in private businesses. I mean, the, the cake thing and the gay wedding stuff. That was a private business, but... Yeah, and look what happened to them. them. Yeah, exactly. Well, that was a politically charged issue. I mean, you can't discriminate against gays. Uh, That was, uh, you know, sexual preference. Look, I'm right there with you. I mean, we've got so many discrimination lawsuits, it's it's not even funny. Well, he's discriminating against me because my nose has been broken and it, you know, kind of veers off to the left. Uh, well, you can't do that. Uh, it, I get you, Perry. I understand what you're saying. We got to let this. Th- we got to let the emotion in this thing, you know, settle out. And uh, guns are, are are not the issue. Never have been the issue. Um, any more than vans or knives or pipe bombs or anything else are the issue. Uh, Perry, I appreciate the call. Four forty three. The time. Back with your calls next. All right, here we go. 4.47 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. Glad you're along. The Court of Public Opinion, your voice, your opinion, your attitude on the issues of the day. That's what we do every day, Monday through Friday from 2 to 5. Uh, let's uh, let's go to uh, Joanne in Rockwall. Joanne, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Joanne? I'm fine, Rick. Thank you for taking my call. First time caller. Thank like you. You scared me to death when you answered. <laughs> but, uh, I just had a comment, and I don't know what the solution is to anything anymore, but I was raised in Louisiana hunting and fishing. My daddy taught me the right ways and the wrong ways of guns. And uh, so I've always been an advocate for guns done the right way. My, pro- my comment is this. It, I hate to see them raise the limit on the age because of the fact that kids go to war. But you know, as well as I do, that they can go down to one corner and buy whatever they want or get whatever they want that's already out there. Yeah. And there just needs to be some kind of solution for that. And I agree that the background sex should be made better for the mental health, it, you know, problems, but... I just keep thinking about all these guns that are already out there that all these crooks and whatevers are using. Well, let, yeah, let's let's look at that. First of all, I I'm not a big advocate of gun buyback programs. Not uh, from day one, those have never made any sense to me, and I'll tell you why. If if I'm a carpenter by trade, if I go out and build houses, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna trade in my skill saw or my nail gun or any of my tools on my tool belt, I'm not going to trade those in for a couple hockey tickets um, because that's how I make my living. 
if I'm a criminal and I rob people and I break in places, I'm not going to trade my gun in for basketball tickets. Uh, I mean, that's absurd. I mean, basically what you're going to get are a bunch of guns that have been sitting in the closet since uh, grand grandpa died, and it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, you know, if, if a, a criminal uses a gun in, the, in his business, which is being a criminal, he's not going to trade it in. Uh, he's probably not going to go to Walmart or Dick's to buy it. I agree with all of that, Rick, and I never thought about even having people buy guns back because, you know, that's not going to get rid of the bad people. Of course that not. Use the gun. And I agree with that. It's just that I don't hear anything being said about that part of the problem of all of these shootings. And you know that as well as I do that they can get these guns anytime they want to, and if they are mine to, they can well, you know, see, so. see, you're you're thinking about it realistically, Joanne. Uh, the reason you don't hear, you know, these non-representing representatives in D.C. and all these politicians talking about uh, the change in behavior, the dissolving of society, um, the reason they're not talking about the root cause, which is human behavior, is because they know they can't do anything about that. Um, you know, you put God in prayer back in schools, at least you've got a fighting chance. People are exposed to principles that perhaps they're not exposed to that put human value on human life. Um, you know, otherwise, you know, well, well, I guess we just get rid of the hardware and then by osmosis, the people are going to be better people. That's nuts. And anybody that's got, you know, a functioning brain cell will know that's not the reason for these school shootings. Uh, Joanne, thank you for the call. Very good call. I'll look forward to the next one. Ralph in Trenton. Ralph, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Let me get you off speaker. I'm doing fine. Um, I heard on the news this morning that uh, Walmart was going to go along with Dick's thing about not selling, quote, unquote, assault rifles and making raising everything up to 21. I called them up. Now, I live, i got to drive 22 miles one way to get to a store. And I just told them I paid off my balance, cut my card in half, and said, if you want to be a fool like these liberals think you are, God bless you, because you're not getting in my business anymore. I'm 71 years old, and I'm a veteran from uh, back 66 to 72, and I swore to defend this country, and damned if I won't. Uh, Ralph, uh, they need to hear more of that. You're right. Two of the nation's leading gun sellers. You know, I, I don't know why they said leading gun. I don't think Dick's Sporting Goods was ever... Am I wrong on that? Maybe I am. I don't think Dick's Sporting Goods was a, a hotbed of firearm sales, were they? I don't think they were. Uh, but both of them said yesterday they're going to limit their sales of firearms um, to, uh, I guess, they're not going to sell any gun to anyone under 21 years of age. They also said uh, they would no longer sell items that resemble assault-style rifles. Okay, by definition, an assault rifle is uh, a rifle that uh, has a selector switch that allows you to fire fully automatic. You can't buy those anyway unless you got about 20 grand and a federal firearms license and about six months to wait. So nobody, they weren't selling those. Uh, well, it looks scary. Okay, so it's more symbolism over substance. That's what it is. Okay, now I got you. Uh, Bill, Bill, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing great. And before I start on what Trump said about grabbing the guns, I just want to say I agree with you on putting the word of God back into school, as well as arming the teachers and whatnot. Uh, I think we have a problem with gun idolatry in this country, and just guns alone is not going to fix everything. We've got to get back to where we came from. Well, yeah, you got to put value back on human life. I mean, if, if, if everything you see and do and hear and if you immerse yourself into this, this pitiful culture we've created where you've got video games where, uh, you know, you're pretending to drive a car, you uh, pull up to the curb, you get your heroin fix, pull up to another curb, pick up a hooker, uh, get yourself sexually uh, pleasured as you're driving down the street. That's a video game, by the way. I'm not making that up. You know, we're not talking about space invaders and centipede here. We're talking about... Uh, just the lowest form of human behavior you can play out on a video game. You immerse yourself in that. You listen to music that advocates killing police officers and, uh, you know, debasing women, and then uh, abortion on demand. I mean, if you're in that culture, no wonder nobody cares about other human beings. Yeah, 
biblical principles will take care of that. They will. Try it. Go to Facebook, WBAP. Scroll down to hashtag God in Prayer back in schools. God's blessings on each and every one of you, whether you agree with me or not. Uh, that's always my priority. Stick around. Mark Levin, I'm sure he'll be yelling about something. I'll be back tomorrow at 2. And uh, starting, by the way, did we, did we say this? Yeah, starting next week, we will be doing uh, Facebook Live. You can click on Facebook and, uh, you know, put a, put a face with a, a voice, I guess. We'll be doing that the first segment of every show starting next week. So if you got Facebook, uh, you know, join us on that. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion on News Talk 820 WBAP. That's the only way I know. That's the only way I know.